Right, we speak a little bit more about this with Chief Executive Officer of African Snakebite Institute, Johan Mare. A very good evening to you, Mr. Ren. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Perhaps let's just first start with the production of um, the anti-venom serums. How does that come about? I mean, from what we know from uh, urban legends is that uh, you have to take the actual venom from the snake. Is this correct or is just, as I said, urban legend? Yes. Yes, that is quite right. It's a, it's a quite an archaic process that we've been making anti-venom in this manner since about 1903. Um, venom is taken from those 10 snakes. It's mixed up. It's uh, injected into horses in very small quantities. Not enough to damage the horse, just enough to trigger its immune system. And then over a period of time, you increase the dosages until after about nine months, the horse is immune. And then at that stage, you can draw blood from the horse at two month intervals, even up to about nine liters at a time. You remove the serum from the blood, put it back into the horse, and that serum is then purified. So in essence, the, the anti snake bite serum is horse blood that we're injecting into people. And what that serum does is it neutralizes the snake venom. In terms of uh, South Africa, the most uh, prevalent snake species uh, that is most dangerous, what is that? And, and if we're talking about snake season, what uh, are you expecting as in, does it mean that there's an even greater number? What is a greater number? Well, the bottom line is that in the peak summer seasons, when it's nice and hot and there's a lot of rain, the snakes are most active. That's the time when they hunt. That's the time when they eat as much as they can to get ready for the coming winter. And um, if we look at snake bite incidences, the majority of bites come from Mozambique spitting cobras, puff adders, uh, the, the common night adder, and uh, the stiletto snake. But then we also have bites from cobras and mambas, and uh, black mambas and cape cobras are highly venomous, and those two snakes are responsible for most fatal bites, whereas the puffer and the most and the most big spinning cobra bite far more people, do a lot of damage, tissue damage, but they don't kill a, a large number of people because it's a slow-acting cytotoxic venom, and you have ample time to get to a hospital. So those are the major problem snakes that we have in South Africa. And at the moment, we're in the peak of it. So if we look at the statistics, the majority of the bites happen from about November till uh, April, May. That's when we see about 80% of all snake bites in this country. Mm. So as I was reading the introduction, I was referring specifically uh, to farms and uh, the danger to livestock there. But um, where are you more likely to find snakes during snake season? Oh, they occur countrywide, snakes are everywhere. And some areas have more snakes. So if we look at, at uh, the highest number of incidences, you're looking at the low field areas of northern KwaZulu-Natal, parts of uh, Mpumalanga, uh, going up into sort of eastern Limpopo. But we have a lot of bites in the Western Cape. We have bites here in Gauteng. So the snakes are everywhere. Um, we have about uh, just over 120 species in South Africa. And uh, about 10% of them are highly venomous and they're widespread. They, they, they occur in, as I say, all over the country, but some areas have more snakes than others. And it's not just in farming areas. You know, if you look at the greater Durban area, the snake removers there this season so far have removed more than 200 black mambas from people's houses and gardens. So venomous snakes are quite common in some areas. Sure. So what do you do when you are confronted by a snake? You see a snake and you feel in danger. Yeah, that's a great question. The last thing people should do is try and kill or catch a snake unless they have been trained in doing that. Um, the best thing to do is back off at least five paces immediately, get away from the snake. Once you're five paces or more away from any snake, you are perfectly safe. And then we have snake removers countrywide. We have over 700 people on a free app that do snake removals. So you can access these people through an app and uh, 
there's people everywhere from Limpopo right down to Cape Town that do these snake removals. And it's best to get a professional person to come and do it. Let them come and remove it. And what they will do in terms of the catch and removal permits is they will relocate the snake elsewhere away from people and in good natural habitat. Mm. And what kind of conditions are ideal for snakes uh, to habitate, but also to hide? So I'm just trying to think if people were to be proactive and make sure that they you know, don't cultivate conditions in which you, you would then have a snake problem. Yes, I think uh, the first thing that people must uh, bear in mind is that there is no repellent, there is no substance or plant or chemical that we know of that keeps snakes away. So don't waste your money on snake repellents and Jay's fluid and all the other stuff that people put around their houses. They plant wild garlic and uh, le lemon trees and whatever. None of that works. You can't, you can't repel snakes. But you can have conditions that would lure them into your property. That would be um, gardens that aren't very well kept, gardens that have uh, building rubble lying around, piles of rocks, uh, water features attract toads and the toads attract the snakes. Keeping chickens on your property, that might attract snakes. So I think the important thing is to keep your property as clean as possible, keep it well mowed, the grass nice and short, don't have piles of rubbish lying around. And the moment you see an abundance of toads and of rodents, you're gonna attract the snakes. And, and, and that's anywhere, as you say, it's not like it's just Absolutely. on farms. No, so we, uh, I live here in Pretoria East. Uh, in our area, we have about a dozen people that do snake removal, and they have been incredibly busy removing four, five, six, seven snakes a day. Every day of the week, this is in suburban gardens. The moment you're on a farm or on a small holding, you have a better chance of encountering snakes because you have more suitable habitat. Hmm. If you are bitten by a snake and you don't know whether it's uh, poisonous or not, what is the first thing you ought to do? Yes, the majority of people aren't very good at identifying snakes because they're difficult to identify. And the other thing is that most snake bites happen at night, often when people accidentally step on them. So you barely see the snake. So it's, it's very rare for us to have a very good and positive identification of the snake responsible. The most important thing for anyone to do in any snake bite is get to the nearest hospital. That's all you have to do. Get into a vehicle, get somebody to, to take you to the nearest hospital. Because the main reason why people die from snake bite is that they are bitten by a snake that has a venom that stops your breathing. And the moment your breathing stops, you're going to die. So if we can get you to a hospital, and you have breathing problems, they can assist breathe you. They can intubate and ventilate you. And then we can worry about the treatment. So don't, don't be concerned about which hospitals have anti-venom and all that sort of stuff. All you need to do is immediately get to the nearest hospital. Thank you so much for your time and insights. Chief Executive Officer of the African Snakebite Institute, Johan Murray.